There is so many good things to say about this SMG. Someone said it perfectly here recently. Holding this SMG feels like I'm holding a war crime. Now, what's so crazy is that this can actually be said for both PvE and for PvP. It's not often that you get a weapon that can go between both sides of the game so effectively. And if there was one weapon you 100% need to grind for this season and get the craftable version, it's this Ikelos SMG. By the way, we have a guide on how to grind for these things. Feel free to check that out. Overall, deep sights are dropping more regularly. Fantastic time for you guys to wrap up those weapon patterns. Now today we're going to be talking about the gun rolls for both PvE and for PvP. For my PvE players, it's extremely simple. Anything with Volt Shots. I know we have Surrounded, which does really, really good damage, especially considering that Surrounded spec got deprecated and it's just now a part of Surrounded. You can even get Enhanced Surrounded, but Volt Shot is just too dang good. I like Frenzy, I like Surrounded, but causing Jolt to targets upon reloading after getting a kill with this weapon is just Chef's Kiss, man. Now that's not to say you can't use any of those other traits. I'm just saying, for me, I love the combination of Volt Shot, and I even use Enhance, and I know it just adds on an extra second, but dude, who cares? I'm flexing, man. And I combine it with Enhanced Threat Detector. Now, I know some people are saying, Cross, why not Feeding Frenzy? Feeding Frenzy is really good when you always get kills, but there are going to be times, especially in in-game content, where ads are just too strong, which is where things like Threat Detector comes in. Just being within 15 meters of an enemy will proc this thing, and you get substantial benefits to your reload, stability, and handling. And as far as your mag perk goes, I like serve rounds because it's the combination of both ricochet rounds and high caliber rounds. And on top of that, I feel like the mag perks really doesn't help the weapon. I mean, it does a little bit, but it isn't substantial. Now, the origin trait is Rasputin's Arsenal. And surprisingly, I found Rasputin's Arsenal to be equally as beneficial inside of PvP as it is in PvE. There are so many times in 1v1s with other SMGs where you're constantly having to reload if the duel takes too long, and that can put you in a pickle. But the beautiful thing about Rasputin's Arsenal is that it does proc on break breaking a guardian shield, thus partially reloading your weapons magazine. Now we did a video at the beginning of the season going over new perks, new traits, as well as new origin traits. Rasputin's arsenal reloads up to 48% of the magazine. Keep in mind though, guys, it doesn't actually overflow the mag. It'll just simply top you off if you're at the top end of your magazine. Where it's really beneficial is when you have to take on two different guardians at the same time. Break a shield, as you're doing damage, it auto reloads the weapon, thus allowing you to go straight to the next guardian right afterwards. Now keep in mind, it doesn't appear you can reproc it within the same mag, at least from my experience inside of PvP. Now, I want to talk to you about the god role for PvP, though, when it comes to the Ikelos SMG, because it has changed for me, guys. Since the most recent change here to SMGs with Hotfix 6.3.0.5, they increased damage and aim assist fall off start at zero range by 30%. Simultaneously, though, they reduce damage and aim assist fall off start at 100 range by 6%. The goal of this change was essentially to take high range SMGs and bring them more in line and pretty much condense everything down to that 20 meter area. This means even some of the lowest range SMGs, such as this Etude 12 with 34 range, we tested this pre and post sandbox change and it started off at like 14.8 meters and went up to 17 meters, whereas a super high range Hero's Burden still stayed at 22 meters. Now, Igalos is still pretty much in the middle of the pack. The role I'm going to give you is the one that is actually doing the best for me. And originally, I would have told you range finder is the way to go. But when we actually went and tested things out ourselves, we found that Ikelos was starting to run into damage fall off with range finder at 22 and a half meters. Now what's odd about this is that light GG actually reflects 23.33 meters. So that's a pretty wide margin there. And granted, we're testing this with Darcy ourselves and we just noticed we weren't at that 23 meter range. Now the reason why I bring that up is because if you were to opt out of using range finder and instead utilize tap the trigger and not just tap the trigger, but enhance tap the trigger, which grants an improved short period of greatly increased stability and accuracy on the initial trigger pull, you're still looking at a range on this SMG, at least for my particular role with Hammer Forge Acura's rounds of 21.21 meters. And this is, of course, with a range mass work. The reason why I like this role is that the stability is still healthy. I'm not killing it. I know some people go out there and just rock full bore, you dang barbarians. Stability is important. It's not all about recoil control. It's also about dealing with incoming fire. Stability plays a role in mitigating flinch. So you don't just want to kill it. And on top of that, I find full board has just too many negatives. Negative 10 there in stability. Negative 5 there in handling. Now, 21 meters actually checked out in our testing as well. Around that 21 and a quarter mark, which pretty much lines up correctly here with Light GG. This is really not that much less than what you're getting out of range finder. But the accuracy bumps you get there from tap the trigger is so nice, especially enhanced tap the trigger. Just base tap the trigger gives you 40 stability and minus 50% max recoil kick. It improves accuracy cone. And even though it's on the 
initial trigger pull, that's where our other trait comes in, and that is dynamic sway reduction. Now, the base version improves accuracy and stability while continuously holding down the trigger, but enhance rapidly improves accuracy and stability while continuously holding down the trigger. Now, the reason why the synergy here works so well is that tap the trigger improves accuracy on the front end as well as stability. The accuracy is what's super noticeable. It literally just gives you the shot, and dynamic sway picks everything else back up. And the fact that enhanced dynamic sway activates even sooner, it's a beautiful thing. Now, dynamic sway has actually had some adjustments. One was all the way back in 2020, where they gave some clarification. They talked about how dynamic sway adds 10 stability over time in addition to accuracy, and this is way more powerful than it sounds. They also reduce reticle movement from stability. Should now tell players that this is working. But even back inside of 2022, in October, we had a twa where Bungie talked about dynamic sway reduction. And it says, it seems like it's one of the most misunderstood perks in the game. Can you explain it a little bit about how that works? Bungie stated that dynamic sway reduction starts working as soon as you start firing. Each subsequent shot improves its effects, increasing accuracy and stability until it maxes out, which is around 20 shots. And what was the big kicker here is that high round per minute weapons gets maximum benefits more quickly than lower round per minute weapons, which is perfect here for Icolos, considering it's a 750 round per minute SMG. So again, the beautiful synergy here is tap the trigger, is carrying the weapon on the front end, and dynamic sway reduction carries it on the back end, even if you have to jump from target to target. Guys, I'm telling you, this combination aims itself. And even though a lot of people want to go for the max range roll, like if you were to just completely commit here and go Agarass rounds, full board, yada yada, you're still looking at somewhere around 23 and a half meters. I know Light GG is telling you some things, but Rangefinder has been off in some of our testing. 21 meters and some change is still fantastic for this SMG. Close the gap, utilize something else with it, whether it's a sniper rifle or some other long range weapon, Ikelos will shred everything within that range. And even outside of that range, when you start to run into damage fall off, the weapon still has accuracy. It just takes more shots. Keep in mind, guys, this archetype of SMG has a 0.77 time to kill value. And a lot of people love lightweights, things like funnel web, multi mac submission, etc. They have a 0.73 time to kill value. So it's slightly better, but aggressives are just a tad bit more forgiving, requiring only 80% of your shots to be crits versus the 83% from lightweights. And I'll say in comparison to other aggressives, Ikelos is a step above even them, at least for PvP. In PvE, you've got other options, even though Volt Shot is very, very good. But like amongst aggressive SMGs, you've got Unforgiven with Repulsive Brace, which is fantastic synergy there with Gurf Falcons. But when it comes to Arc 3.0 builds, Ikelos is hands down the best. And as far as PvP goes, I think it's one of the best SMGs for PvP. Did the change to SMGs hurt Ikelos? Not really guys. If anything, it actually allows you to not overcommit there to the highest range roll. I am completely satisfied with my Hammerforge, Akiraz, Enhanced Dynamic Sway, and Enhanced Tap the Trigger roll for PvP. I can close the gap effectively, and this SMG will definitely handle its once. Now, if you don't want to go with these rolls, by all means, you can use other things. You can use Threat Detector, even inside of PvP. You've got Range Finder as well. Perpetual Motion is also present on this weapon, and again, Enhanced Perpetual Motion is present. But notice none of those perks actually dive into the accuracy of the weapon. That is why dynamic sway and tap the trigger is so good. I tried a lot of different roles and big shout out to everyone in today's video because we went through a bunch of them. I wanted to try them all. I wanted to see, okay, which one of these is actually feeling the best. And for me, the role that I have here on my own account, this one is the best PVP role in the game. Post 6.3.0.5. So guys, get it for yourselves. This is a definite must have weapon before the end of the season. We will be testing other SMGs, most notably adaptive SMGs, as well as the Precision SMG Forensic Nightmare. So be looking for reviews on those. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.